Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at abstract classes and pure virtual functions in C++. So sometimes you want to create a class hierarchy and uh, you want to have a base class which it doesn't make sense to instantiate. So, for example, imagine that, you've, um, that you're going to create classes representing different kinds, kinds of animal, like um, dog, cat and so on. You might, there, there are reasons why you might want those to derive all from the same base class. Um, after all, dogs, cats, giraffes, they are, they are all types of animal. So it makes sense to derive them all from the same base class, which we, which we could call animal. But there's no sense in actually instantiating an animal. So there's a, we, we can have dogs, actual particular dogs, but we can't have just an animal. In the real world, we can't have a, a thing walking about us that's an animal and isn't a particular type of animal. So it doesn't make sense to instantiate this, um, this animal class. Let's make dog derive from animal, but it does make sense to instantiate dog. Now, um, for that purpose, we, we have um, abstract classes. An abstract class is a class containing methods which um, have no implementation and we say that they're pure virtual functions, or pure virtual methods, if you like. So uh, to make this work, let's say, for example, we decide that um, all animals should have a method called speak, and that makes the sound that we most commonly associate with that animal. So let's have a public here, and let's have a virtual. We want to make it virtual because we have to be able to override it. Virtual void speak, like that. Now I'll just put the prototype in for the moment. In, in dog, speak might look like this. So I'll, re I'll repeat the virtual keyword, although it's not necessary, but just for clarity. And uh, we'll have virtual void speak. And this could make a sort of dog-like noise, like woof, as dogs say in English. So um, this dog says woof. Um, now, we, we can't provide an implementation of speak an animal because what noise is an abstract animal going to make? So what we do is we, we set the prototype equal to zero. Uh, so this is not literally setting it equal to zero. But this is just a notation that means there's no implementation of this. This is what we call a pure virtual function. And a class which contains pure virtual functions is called an abstract class. So animal is an abstract class because it has, um, in this case, just one pure virtual function. But if it has any at all, any, any pure virtual functions, it's an abstract class. And we can't instantiate abstract classes. So if I say here dog dog, that's going to work. And we can call dog dot speak. That's fine. So if I run this, we're fine. And that's because um, dog, although it... it um, it extends animal, it derives from animal, it's a subclass of animal. It, it provides concrete implementations for all of the pure virtual functions that exist in animal. Uh, so, I mean, we can imagine, for example, that animal would have several pure virtual functions, and then we have a class dog that provides implementations for one or two of them, but not all of them. Dog would then still be abstract. Then if we have a class which derives from dog, like for example a class called Spaniel, which is a type of dog, and Spaniel f finishes the job of implementing all of the pure virtual functions in animal, then we could instantiate animal. So you, you've, got to, you've got it in your class, you've got to implement all the pure virtual functions if you want to be allowed to instantiate it. So what we can't do here is we can't do animal, animal because animal has pure virtual functions there. And if, if we had another pure virtual function in here, like virtual void um, run equals naught, now we can't even instantiate dog, because yes, dog provides uh, implementation for one of these pure virtual functions, but not all of them. So dog is now also an abstract class. And we, we could go on, you know, we could say class labrador public and then we could have um, pure we could we could implement well we've already implemented speak um, if we make Labrador a um, a subclass of dog we've already got an implementation of speak we just have to have an implementation of run as well 
to make it complete. So we could say here, labrador running. So, okay, so now dog is an abstract class, uh, animal is an abstract class, but labrador fi finally finishes the job of implementing all these pure virtual functions so we can instantiate it. So I can't instantiate dog, this gives me errors, but I can say labrador lab, let's say, and we can say lab.run lab.speak. We've got implementations for everything there. Let's just save this and run it so that works. Um, there, are, there are other reasons why you might want to do this besides the fact that you might want to, besides the fact that it just makes sense to, to have some kind of abstract class. If you've got lots of different kinds, lots of different examples of, um, of some kind of category that exists in the real world or in programming, like an animal, like a machine, you've got lots of different kinds of machines, it makes sense to have them all derived from the same base class because machines like cameras, cars, uh, computers and so on, they're all types of machines. So if you want to represent them in your program, it would make sense that they all, all derive from the same class, uh, which we could call machine, because they are, are all types of machine. And this pure virtual function mechanism, uh, it gives you the chance on the one hand to uh, to force all your machines to have particular methods that they implement. It also uh, enables you to stop people instantiating machine because if it has any virtual void, you know, pure virtual methods, then um, then we can't instantiate it. It's an abstract class. But besides that, it has um, other uses as well. So. We, we can't create an array from animal. If, if we try to do this, like uh, we call this animals, then we can't do that because when you create an array of objects that actually runs the constructors of the objects, like if we give, um, let's give Labrador a, a constructor here, Labrador, and let's say um, new Labrador. So if we create a array of Labradors, Labrador, like this. Um, oh yeah, actually I missed out the, the kind of number there, but uh, take it from me that this, this wouldn't have worked anyway. Let's call it labs and put in five. So we've got five Labradors. That is gonna um, run the constructor of these five Labradors we see here. So for that reason, you can't create an array of animals because we can't run the constructor of, of animal because it's a, it's a um, it's an abstract class. We can't instantiate it. We can't run the constructor. But if we, um, w yeah, we can't. We could create an ve a vector of animals, but it wouldn't be any use. We couldn't add. We couldn't add objects to it. Uh, that that wouldn't work either. But um, because we we can't run a copy constructor or anything like that. But we could create a array of pointers to animals. So we could say animal. Um, Animal pointer. Let's try to get this syntax right. I think this is what we want. Animal pointer animals five. That's going to compile. Let's just check that it does. Um, so that's fine. And then, then we could say, um, well, if I move this Labrador code above here, now any any concrete class that um, derives from animal, any subclass of animal that imp that has implemented. Uh, all the pure virtual functions, we can now add to this. We can now add a pointer to that, to objects of that class, to this array. So we could say um, animals, uh, animals zero, for example, equals address of our Labrador here, which is a concrete class, it's not an abstract class. And then we could use that array absolutely as normal. So we could say dot speak again, for example. So that works. So again, there's another advantage there in that you can create, if you've got a bunch of different um, subclasses that all derive from the same superclass, you can create arrays of pointers to the superclass and you can put all kinds of subclasses in there. That works fine. Um, we could also do stuff like creating functions, like we could say void test animal 
reference A. And uh, let's call A dot speak like that. Or maybe A dot run just for variety. And then we could call test and we could pass in lab there. So this, this also works. If we run this now, we get uh, Labrador running, which is coming from here. So uh, by extending a single subclass, we get all the benefits of polymorphism, where we can use subclasses in many situations where the, the superclass is expected. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. By the way, we're going to look at an, at an excellent example of this um, in the next tutorial when we look at functors. Uh, functors, functors, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, functors I suppose. Um, but for now, um, if you want an exercise here, uh, then I I'd suggest um, indeed creating some little class hierarchy. It can be two or three classes deep, just as you like. Um, verify that you, you can't in instantiate abstract classes, you can't create objects from them, and that you can instantiate classes if you, um, subclasses if you then implement all the pure virtual methods and try creating an array of the superclass as well, the abstract superclass, an array of pointers to it I should say and try adding your various subclasses, pointers to your subclasses, pointers to objects of your subclasses I should say to that array just like I've done here, it's worth very fine that you can do that. You can try this as well, passing um, references to subclasses to a function where you've got a um, reference to the uh, to the abstract superclass. It's worth trying all these things out. And um, you might be able to think of an interesting use for that. Uh, you know, for example, if you, if you were writing games, you could have an abstract class that represents a sprite, a thing that moves on the screen. And then you could implement all kinds of um, concrete types of sprites, spaceships, asteroids, whatever, and then add them to that. Um, add them to that array so that will be a common thing to do in, in, in games programming. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.